Some have called it genocide. Others have referred to it as ethnic cleansing, killing, rape and mass migration. This is what the Rohingya Muslims continue to face. There have been condemnations, but what about action? We talk to Nurul Islam, president of Arakan Rohingya National Organization. I'm Hassan Abdullah and you're watching One on One. Mr. Nurul Islam, good to have you on TRT World. Now, we have some idea about the situation in Myanmar, particularly what's happening to the Muslims there. But give us a detailed picture of the real, of the ground realities there. In, in, in nutshell, I, I, I need to tell you, this is, uh, we are now facing full genocide. The level of persecution is amount to genocide. And uh, you know, this, uh, this problem is not a new phenomenon. It is, uh, we have been subjected to uh, crimes against humanity and large-scale persecution right from 1962 military takeover. And uh, gradually they are now um, they tightening their peace situation. I mean, we, we, become, we, we, we become excuse. Gradually we become excuse by way of I mean, the imposing restrictions and uh, making some oppressive law like 1962 citizenship, 1882 Myanmar citizenship law. So now this is a, a frequently, this, uh, uh, they have uh, adopted, a, in fact, a national policy against our people. National policy to uh, make a, I mean, a clean sweep of the Muslim to re, uh, from Bam Arakan. So to turn it, uh, to turn Arakan into a Bamanized Buddhist region, this is their target. So they are gradually implementing, implementing this. Now, the, recently, it, it became unprecedented, and the, the level of persecution is amount to genocide, is uh, according to legal experts, and the, some leaders also, I mean, the terms illegal, I mean, the, the, uh, uh, genocide. Uh, the, even the United Nations has the terms, is a uh, textbook I mean, the, of uh, I mean, the ethnic cleansing, textbook case of ethnic cleansing. Yeah. You've been facing killings, rapes, um, Forced displacements, resettlements, uh, discriminatory citizenship laws. Now that is the one of the ASM military operation. These are the, 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 the these are the regular. I mean, the, 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 the practices. In fact, is it rape, murder, the extrajudicial killing, and the, and, the, and the extortion, burning of houses, villages, even in fact destruction to life and properties. This is very much, they always, they, they, it, it, it is very terrible, it's going on, it's going on. You, you look, even the 200, more than 200 villages has already been burned on. These villages are not a small villages. In some villages got 2,000 houses in fact. Eh? Even how this is, a, hundreds of women have been raped. And you know, this is a, 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 among the refugees, this is a majority people majority refugees who took shelter in Bangladesh are heavily traumatized, children and the women. Even 11,000 children were uh, in the refugee camp without parents, they are orphaned. So that means either they lost their parents or, or, or they could not find them. This, that, that, these people have already been I mean, killed. And the young people, wherever they find the young people, they, they kill it. Now, the persecution has been going on for decades, yeah. but why is it that uh, this latest reign of terror we're witnessing from the uh, Myanmar military, the timing of it, is it the case that the media has now started highlighting it, or is there a particular reason why the military now feels that it can conduct this state terrorism with such impunity? That is actually, you know, this is a, in fact, we are subjected to the state terrorism, our people. This has been the military, uh, the one uh, to have, uh, they have got two, 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 two objectives there. One is, they want to still to give the power in hand, and they are easy target, the Muslim is the easy target. To master the support of the people, if the, the, the Rohingyas, particularly the Rohingyas are targeted, and nobody will care, this is a, they will get the support of the people. This is, and at the same time, you know, this is a Kofi Annan Commission, Kofi Annan Commission has given the recommendation. And the Aung San Suu Kyi has promised that 
she will be going to implement this, all the recommendations. But they don't want, in collaboration with some Rakhine, the Buddhist, Buddhist people of America, Buddhist leaders, they opposed the fund from the beginning. And in collaboration with the Rakhine, I mean the Rakhine leaders and, and, and the military leaders, and they have, they, have, they, have, they, have, they have made a joint conspiracy. Before this operation, actually, this operation, the kind of leaders, one is the fireman, uh, Dr. A. Mong Wan. He has, a, he has discussion with the, I mean the uh, me online, the general me online. And then the following day, they have started I mean, the operation. Now, Aung San Suu Kyi has been promoted as a global icon of peace. Uh, what has been her role throughout this latest episode of massacres? No, no, Aung San Suu Kyi, actually, we have uh, expected uh, much uh, from her. We supported her for her freedom, actually. But uh, the way she's doing, she's, she's, uh, I have to say that she's complicit in, the, in the, what is going on in the Rohingya genocide. And the most important thing is she's not telling the truth, she's not speaking out. The one, least recently, she has spoke out. What, what, what she, she, she did it. And she was telling that militaries are doing nothing wrong. And, and at the same time, uh, although these are the 450,000 or more than that people have been already taken shelter, and then the large number of our settlements have already been burned on. She was telling in a, in a recent uh, uh, diplomatic briefing on 19th of uh, uh, this month, she was telling uh, still more than half the villages, half the villages are still intact. Well, what does it mean? That's a hypocritical statement she's given. Since the military there remains the center of power, is it perhaps the case that she feels that she could be losing her, her position if she was to take a stand and condemn this? No. I don't think that if she condemned, she could condemn it. She could condemn it. She's the Nobel, Louis, I mean, Nobel Prize winner. But then she could tell, she could ask, please, if she is not going, I don't say that uh, you should... Uh, uh, you, I don't say that uh, this is a, at least you could tell the truth. What is happening on the ground, this is not, one should not do it. She doesn't have a moral courage to, to do this. Actually. She also seems to be suggesting that um, the military is fighting terrorists. She, she is justifying. It means, it's a, implicitly she is justifying there's a military I mean, I mean, the onslaught against our people. Now, there has also been talk um, that it's not just the military of Myanmar that's involved in these killings, there are also some militias operating there, perhaps some um, locals. That is very true, that's very true. Uh, 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 militaries were uh, launching operation this op uh, together with the local militia, local Rakhine Buddhist monks. So these people are well protected, I mean well, well patronized, and where, where the military w will not go, or unable to go, these people are going in there killing the people. Now, a few weeks ago, one of the international broadcasters um, aired this report, which suggested that perhaps some false flag operations are being conducted there to give an impression that um, some Muslim groups or individuals are themselves burning their houses or other houses to try and give the impression that uh, the Myanmar military or perhaps the militias are doing this. Um, are there any false flag operations taking place there to try and defame the Muslims in Arakan? No, no this is, uh, in fact, this is what happening uh, after 25th. These militaries are, I mean, killing the Rohingya villages. And then this is, uh, in some places, what it is, there are some uh, small Hindu commu commu communities. They, they force them, even when they, some, they organize some Hindu women, then they, 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 they would, uh, would put a head, false head, head, head scarf, as if they look like the Muslim. And uh, they, they show the picture that they are burning the house. But in fact, they say they, they are women who are burning the house, so even uh, the scarf she was wearing is a plastic cover in a, in a, in a uh, tablecloth. A tablecloth she was putting on this plastic. So they, this way they are just they distort the information. We find some Buddhist monks are also involved in this. So can we say that there is a religious motivation behind this? No, no, these, these are, they are not good Buddhists. I think they are not good Buddhists, you see. The Buddhism, you know, Buddhism is based on, uh, the, the Buddhist philosophy is 
based on compassion and negation. Yeah. How did the Buddhist monk like a Viratu, 969, you know, they, they, are, they, are, they, are, they are patronized by the government, military people, to kill the, the for, for giving them the free, I mean, the license to uh, uh, preach hatred, systematic hatred, systematic racism against our people. And they are the people who are um, inciting the people to kill them, to kill the Rohingya people, to kill the Muslim in general, actually. They are doing this. They, they are, even they are in the forefront while killing. They, they are, they, we, 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 with their own, I mean, the ropes, they, they, are, they are killing the people. But surely these monks have a following. What has been the role of um, senior Buddhist figures, perhaps other monks? Have they been condemning it? Have they been... Um, sort of making statements to try and delegitimize these actions? Of course, there are some right minded uh, Buddhist monks, but, but their number is very few. Them are still very few, comparatively very few. In the, particularly in the case of Rohingya. Right. So, what's the ultimate objective behind all these killings? Is it a case of um, clearing the area of the people, of the Muslims living in Arakan? Um, are there economic motives? Are there other political motives? What are the motives? Now this is a, you know, this is a, for the military, you know, from, f for more than 50 years the military are ruling the country. They have got a good infrastructure established there. Economy is virtually in their hand. The militaries are very rich people now. And they have got black monies and everything in their hand. But in, in Arakan also, what happened, even, even, even many, many businesses are controlled by the military. What's the role of the civil society in Myanmar? The civil society, we are very sorry to say that. Uh, you know, the Bamba is a multicultural, multi-language country, lingual country. Many ethnic groups are living in the country. The Bamban, Buddhist Bambans are the majority. But due to protracted propaganda against our people, even the, uh, all media is uh, full of distortion against Rohingya people. So they have become misled. They, I mean, uh, they, uh, they, they are, they are, they are, they are not uh, uh, looking at the Rohingya people very, I mean, they friendly. So this is the problem for us actually. Behind them, I mean, this is, you know, this is a Buddhist. You are talking of Buddhist monk. Buddhist monks are still very powerful in the in the in the, in the Burmese society. These people are taking the lead to make propaganda. I mean, they, they are preaching the hatred against the Rohingya people. So this is very much effective. And the military people, militaries are also encouraging this, to do this. And at the same time, Aung San Suu Kyi herself, she is not stopping those people. She is not uh, issued any statement that not to do this. We are the one, this is the one of the, we are very sad to say that even Aung San Suu Kyi, somebody says that she is not powerful. She, uh, still she could do many things. She could tell the truth. She could still say, ah, he's her country people. Don't do it. Don't do this. You have to, you have to respect the uh, human rights of the people because human rights is universal. The universalism of human rights should be respected. But this much she could tell. But she is not telling this. So this way people are those who are uh, preaching, those who are doing, uh, projecting this uh, uh, hatred against the Rohingya people. They feel encouraged that they are doing more. How do you view the global response, particularly the response from Muslim countries? Response from the Muslim country is actually, you know, this is a, we need real action, not a, not a statement. We have a lot of statements in the given. Particularly, the, we are very much thankful to the, uh, the Honorable President of Turkey, Erdogan, who was the first to give a, see, a strong, to raise a strong voice on the Rohingya people. And then the Muslim world also, they, uh, but we need a practical action, this is very important. Why she is uh, they are making conferences, making a statement. Recently in the UN General Assembly, side led of the UN General Assembly, there is a meeting and they made a, sta a statement. This much, uh, we are seeing this. Actually, look, uh, this should be the uh, one way we're doing this, that there should be the intervention here. This is the, this is the case merit to discuss in the United I mean, Nations Security Council. Because, uh, but the Security Council, unfortunately, they could not pass any resolution. Unless uh, their Security Council resolution, like no resolution is binding. Even then, we have to push, that Muslim country must push that, 
there must be the Security Council resolution on this, this one thing. The other thing is, if the Muslim country themselves say, should find out a, a way to protect the Muslims, on the, uh, this is a very important thing. We are still, uh, we are still hope for the best, actually. Uh, we want to have a peaceful settlement of our crisis, our problem. Uh, the, uh, the role of YC is very important here. At the same time, the, the Muslim world and the, and the uh, uh, right-minded I mean, leaders of the world, they should come up, I mean, fall forward to resolve our issues. We are still hoping that uh, our camp problem can easily be solved uh, in the peacefully, because what we want, our people want is, we want to have to live peacefully and honorably in our own homeland uh, as equals, as equal in Arakan, peaceful crew, uh, Apple in the principle of peaceful coexistence among all other people in the country. We, we, we hear some buzzwords like humanitarian assistance and so forth, but obviously there is an issue of acceptance. Uh, the people, the Rohingya people who have been living on that land for hundreds of years are not even being recognized as citizens. Um, what role should the United Nations, for example, be playing? And practically, what, have, ha what has the United Nations done so far? This is a... Uh, to deny, uh, th this is a completely United Nations has to so Where we are calling it a genocide, United Nations accepted it as, a, as, as, a, as a ethnic cleansing. Ethnic cleansing is an international crime. International crime in international, it goes international jurisdiction. It's a global responsibility. So in, United Nations has, uh, have a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a world body, they have to, they are, they are responsibility to maintain international peace and security. So this is, they, are, they have to protect our people right now. How do you view the role of India and China in particular throughout this situation? We are very sorry to say that uh, India is not supporting our cause, although this is a very uh, humanitarian, great humanitarian issues. And then the, the India is, uh, we have about 40,000 refugees in India as well. But uh, the China, these are our regional powers. China is also not uh, uh, in Security Council they did not support our case. But yesterday, there's a, a Chinese from Bangladesh, there was a delegation visit in China, and the Chinese Communist Party has assured them and that uh, they agree to have a permanent solution for the Rohingya should be there. Now, um, there has been a lot of fundraising in different countries in the name of the Rohingya people. Um, do we even know if all that aid is even getting there? What's the situation of aid distribution and this humanitarian assistance on the ground? The Bangladesh, well, Bangladesh government is now actually, uh, they allowed every, I mean, uh, aid workers at a humanitarian organization uh, to visit the ground. I mean, so uh, until now, even, uh, there is no systematic, I mean, distribution or relief so far, I think there should be. It should be done in a very systematic way. Now, you're a lawyer as well. Do you feel that the conditions on the ground necessitate perhaps a military intervention on humanitarian grounds? You, you, you look, this is, you know, this is, you know, this is a, for a long time this is, we have been under persecution. And we have completely defenseless people. We want to, have, to live peacefully in our own homeland. And, but they are not allowing us to have peaceful living in our own homeland. So even, 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 even the, the, since the government itself is the persecutor, so the responsibility lies with the international community. It's a case of R2P, responsibility to protect these peop people. So even this is a, the only way out is military intervention to save the Rohingya people. The problem with Rohingya is a very uh, long-standing problem, as, as, as all as Palestinian problem. But, uh, um, uh, about two million of our people by now has been out of the country uh, because of the persecution. And uh, those of uh, those who are living in, inside the country, they are counting their days in utmost miseries and dismay. And they are, even they are, they are counting their days to be expelled to be, to, to, uh, from the country. This being position, we are completely helpless. This is not responsibility lies with the international community, and the international community has a responsibility to protect our people, and it's uh, in, in, just, uh, given the situation, dire situation, 
the humanitarian intervention is a must. It's a very most urgent. Otherwise, we'll be getting finished. Now, we saw intervention in the case of Kosovo, for example, but it's argued that it was very late and it did cost many lives. Uh, why, is, why do you think the international community has perhaps failed to learn lessons from past mistakes? Kosovo, Rwanda? Yeah, that time, the, the uh, international community always failing. They are always failing. And never again is happening in our Khan again. What is never ever again is happening. Uh, this, uh, the world leaders have pledged many times, but it's happening in our Khan. So we, B Bangladesh, I mean, the uh, Prime Minister uh, Sheikh Hasina has uh, his ship boys for the creation of a uh, safe zone inside Arakan. But uh, it should be much earlier. Safe zone, the protect, the, 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 the concept of safe zone is those who, who want asylum outside the country to stop them, not to take asylum outside the country. At the same time, those who are outside the country to, to, get, to get them to, uh, to call them back to their country. This is the thing. But the much, more than half the people has already been out of the country now. Now, if the international community is failing the oppressed people, then what options are they really left with? Legally, and perhaps, you know, if push comes to shove, if they have no option, um, do they have any provision under international law to perhaps try and protect themselves? Now, actually, what you see, uh, uh, you look at the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the preamble of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights there. If there is no, uh, I mean, uh, either the international community has uh, protect these people or the international community have uh, helped these people to protect themselves. This is the law. How do the people of Arakan feel about the international response? Do they feel that efforts are being made at an international level to help them? Or do, or do they feel that nothing is happening? There's two things, actually. One thing is that we have no other way. The only expectation is the international community. Because uh, we cannot expect that uh, our domestic remedies is completely exhausted. And uh, 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 be, we have been rendered stateless in our, in our country. And then we don't get, a, if we are prosecuted, we don't get any, 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 any remedies, any protection any from, from, from the, from, 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 from domestically. So the only uh, expectation international community. But at the same time, uh, given the past experiences, because here, this is not the first time that uh, uh, these, uh, uh, these kinds of persecutions go against our people. And uh, we have many times we become refugees. And many times we have come, uh, 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 we have gone back to our homeland uh, through reputation, but the problem remains, it still is going on. So the, it is just because that international community has neglected our people. So until now, no concrete action to, I mean, the, to, to, to stop it, to this kinds of violence, once and for all, no international I mean, measures are taken. Uh, given the past uh, experiences, and uh, uh, we're not very much, not very much, because this is not the first time. We have, we, this is a, many times we have been refugees, many times we, we have gone back. Again, this is a repeating again, it's just recurring again and again situation. Nobody comes with our rescue actually, in fact. Are the Muslims of Arakan losing hope in the international system? Um, what are they thinking? What do they want? No, actually the situation is very dire, I tell, I tell you. So actually, we are still, our people are very peaceful. And the Bambi's government is now the, uh, making propaganda that they get our people that there are some terrorist group. This is completely unfounded. Maybe on, that on 25th, there was a, a, some very small, I mean, the uh, police outpost, some attacks had been made. But these are the, some desperate young people. Because these are from 2012, I tell you, I, I told you earlier, people become very, very much desperate. Even say, the social infrastructure were completely fabric. The social fabrics were completely destroyed. Somebody lost their parent, somebody lost their, their father, their loved one. Even the, the young people being desperate, they want to listen to anyone. So when there's a military operation was going in the, in the so they could not for fear, they could not uh, withstand with this. Then they attack some, 
of the police station. Does police station mean you look those, those people, they are very poorly equipped, no training, nothing, a half clap with, with the farm tools and a stick. They attack, 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 attack the police. How can it be the ter 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 terrorism? It's not. Completely not. It's unfounded. Mr. Nur Islam, good to have you on TRT World.